samples and then I can confirm a few things. But this particular uh, curvature, it's a signature curvature for the group and the genus Anthotylum, but that's not uh, seen in all the rock fins. Oh, interesting. Also, yeah. So this curvature is like part of their anatomy. It's not just like the current. No, it is in. part of the anatomy. Oh. And uh, the one that we had collected a rock pin, but uh, that did not have this curvature, if I'm not wrong. I made a little drawing and took a lot of notes so we can talk to Sebastian about it later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a very important and a very cool observation of the rock pens. Thank you so much. Okay, you can uh, go wider. Did you get the uh, DSC there, Hans? There's something on the DSC uh, lens. Yeah, they can crop that out. Okay. Got it. Thank you. So for the rock pen, is the central axis still called right. the rachis? Yes. Okay. Yes. It is called the rachis for all uh, sea pens. That's true. So all sea pens have a rachis and they all have a peduncle? Yes. Okay. So the lower part of the rachis is called the peduncle. So okay. it's not a separate structure. Oh, okay. It's so the central axis is the same the same structure. Upper part is called the rachis, the above ground. The below ground is called the uh, peduncle kind of like a shoot root differentiation in a tree. Mm. Tiny black fish down there, passing over. Another sea star. I'll say, are you sketching the, the rock pen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm taking notes. I have a little diagram here now. Very cool. <laughs> I love that. For another 20. So many people 20 are at 90, or sorry, easterly. I love that so many people are kind of using their, like, na almost like nature journaling, um, mm -hmm. but for the deep sea. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, I find it helps me, like, recall things better. Yeah, especially um, when you have, like, terms like peduncle and mm -hmm. what was the other one? Rachis, right? Yeah. Rachis, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm most likely misspelling everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this a... Um, oh. A salp? Maybe a salp. Uh, no, it's a little jellyfish. It's one of those uh, oh. crown jellyfishes of low bay. Oh. Yeah. Or oh. five. <laughs> I love when we all have the same reaction. It's like watching a movie and everyone uh, like reacting at the same time. <laughs> I think things have finally calmed down a little bit that I can have SPL on for a few minutes. This Thank has been a very demanding dive. Thanks so much for um, managing all of that, Mia. I know you're looking at so many different screens. Oh, well, Dan's the one doing the driving. That's the hard part. Fantastic job, front row. It's another day at the office. And Tito. Yeah, Tito's over there still. Oh, welcome, Tito. Uh, I didn't know you were here. I was down just a bit for me. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, Jake's on the interaction. Jake's on the interaction. And Amber's here in the room as well. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome. Thanks, Tito and Amber. Hello. Thank you. I think I knew you were here. I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are quiet. <laughs> Um, and Mia, you said you had a moment to be on SPL, right? Do you mind sharing a little bit about this terrain? And we had a question about, um, you know, our pace to the caldera with the waypoints. Any input you have on that? Um, I know I'm going to have to call in another movement in uh, another minute or two. Um, so let me get back to you. Sure, no problem. Good for another uh, 20 east, please. Good.
this was actually quite a deep observation for a rock pen in the Pacific. We have, um, if you look at the depth distribution, they have a much deeper distribution in the Atlantic Ocean than the Pacific Ocean. We have uh, quite deep observations of rock pens from the sea pen, but from the Pacific, but uh, this is definitely falls in one of the deeper observations for Pacific. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so again, this expedition is not only about identifying the animals and seeing new potential um, species, but also understanding their distribution as well in terms of depth and um, area around the world, areas around the globe, right? So very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. These three, ob I think this would be the third observation of a rock bell for the expedition. And these three will definitely be added to my data set. <laughs> I have like... I have those data sets ready, but I, I can always add a little bit more of it. I'm imagining like a huge Excel data sheet, or is yes. it not that many because... It is a lot. <laughs> but still better than working with plankton? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Gotta love Excel. Uh, I actually <laughs> dislike Excel. I, I, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> there are people who are very good at Excel and I envy them. I'm not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you but guys want me to jump in really quick when I have a moment? Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Thanks. Okay, so I have a few moments here. So I'm looking at the dive plan. I think the uh, horizontal, sorry, the vertical move uh, distance for this dive is 1050 meters, uh, which is, I think, quite a bit. And we will end up around 1250 meters. Um, we are just over halfway, yeah, around halfway, just over halfway. And we're trying to get up to this caldera that um, I know Val is really, really interested in. I happened to be in the room when they were planning this dive, so I know how interested she was. Uh, Dan was there too, um, but yeah. So it's an interesting profile. I know they, they talked quite a bit about it and we're trying to decide like do we start shallower so we can get to the caldera so um, yeah if that kind of gives you an idea of what it's like in the dive planning mode everyone comes together from the different teams and discusses the pros and cons of where to start um, and you know not looking at something at the expense of something else and I need a call back to the bridge so sure. i will stop there <laughs> all right thanks so much for jumping in we always love hearing your mapping insights right there yeah keep going uh, east there please sure yeah on a serious note about the excel and everything it is um, those are very useful tools for everybody to learn for example i don't use excel i just use have like data compiled in it because it's easier to export as an Excel, but I don't use Excel for anything else other than just having the data in there. I use R, and uh, I think for any of our young listeners or anybody, just for any field, it is very important to gradually learn these analysis skills, and uh, you can self, you can teach yourself. There are lots of tutorials. And uh, because there will be people who, uh, you may come across people who are very good at, at them, but it is very difficult for somebody to teach you these kinds of skills. So you have to kind of do and do them on your own, troubleshoot them. So it's very important to start learning how to use something like R or any such thing and they become yeah. a very use. I think I, I had a really good professor. Um, her name is Dr. S Nissa Silberger. Um, and she taught an, a class in R, and it was amazing. We all started off from different places. Some people never even opened R before, and others had. Yeah. And they, at the end of the class, we all gave presentations of like That's nice. an entire project that we coded on our own. Uh, oh. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think if you can find those people that can yeah. teach, that's so important because yeah. sometimes it's so difficult to t sit and teach yourself something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's also okay. not impossible Sorry. to teach yourself. No, definitely yeah. not. But but I know it's I easier struggled. if, oh, yeah. I struggled yeah. with R for years and my experience with R actually has been quite bad. Those white <laughs> things that look like pumpkin oh. seeds? Yes, uh, those barnacles? are. Barnacles? Barnacles. Oh, I barnacles. think I struggled. <laughs> 
So that's an Iridogorgia, but unfortunately in quite a poor state. We have we see that a lot of barnacles are growing over it, and a few Ophuroids. And we can see the dark skeleton of the Chrysogorgiate or the Iridogorgia inside, which is the protein skeleton. I didn't realize, I, I th actually, I think we had this. Oh, that one. Oh, it's going to jump. <laughs> um, the barnacles have little... Like little feelers? Yes, thank you. Yeah, those are the CVs, I think those yeah. are called, Sir which are extended. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Cirripeds? Yeah, cirripeds. Cirripeds, yeah. right. And they basically help them well, uh, do suspension feeding, so they're gra grabbing things out of the water. And they're actually um, related to crustaceans. Right. So if you imagine kind of a shrimp catching things with a fish or catching things with its legs in the water and then moving it back to um, it moving okay, it back going. inside its shell into its face that's kind of what a barnacle is like a weird crustacean that decided to stay in one spot exactly. I always thought of barnacles as um, mollusks so it's it's interesting. Interesting. yeah no those are arthropods Tico struck up You know, Taylor Ann, you know, we're the mid 1600s now. I was just um, going to say these rocks look very these nice. These rocks are Good looking pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of a shelf, it's sort of a slope break because it becomes steeper right above here. And, you know, looking like if, if we go up further, it's going to, um, you know, flatten out up by waypoint eight. So we're not so interested in the flats, but in the slope break. What do you think? Yeah, I think now rock would be sample. a great time. These rocks look like they're Rock loose. sample time? Yeah. Um, yeah but these only look nice people who are having too. birthdays get to do rock samples, oh. is that right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's that's the the boy so back cool. from his uh, Yep, the classroom call, I think. I can't really see. Yeah, yeah I can't see. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this would be an ideal place <laughs> for a rock sample, Dan. If possible. Right okay, great. So we'll go ahead and pause the chat until we collect that sample just to let everyone concentrate. To the ships. Nice. There's right. some nice angular rocks in here. So many rocks. <laughs> so little time. It's like when you're, you have too many options and you can't choose. Yeah, and Val's typing in the chat, so we'll get her input. Yeah, it's rock o'clock. <laughs> rock o'clock. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to uh, come up just a bit more. Yep. Look. I'll come up with you. A little more in the bank here for we. Oh. You can get your. Uh, so they've got it all wonky here. Oh, I'm liking the way these are looking. Yeah, these look like all of these look like good options. And that Almost. area over there. Get your weapon fired up there. <laughs> Roger. Like I like how Hans now is like super excited <laughs> and invested. Well, so all things are relative now. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of enthusiasm in there. Atalanta's good, like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that one. It's not like it's a piece of rusty metal. Getting a big one? No, we want grapefruit sized. Oh, grapefruit, <laughs> grapefruit, not watermelon. You always gotta try. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a grapefruit size. I'm gonna start making you carry those, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that rock. Right there, dead on. That one's a little buried. What about that? Yeah, that's Is the one I'm looking at. Angular enough? We'll we'll see when we spin it. We'll poke yeah. it. Uh, can we get you the lasers back? We're not going to have on? a lot of time here. So Roger. No pressure or anything, birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lasers would help. Um, am I just lasers. not seeing them? Why are the lasers? Mm -hmm. on? Sorry. I'm going to turn the lasers off. Oh, Please. there they are. Awesome. Thank you. I think you had them off for the Dumbo. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, Connor Law. Sorry, Connor Law. Sorry, Connor Law. Sorry, Connor Law. way too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One that Sorry, the okay. on, I think hold, hold, hold. There's another option here. Yep. 
There's uh okay, that one ain't moving. Yeah. The little one and uh here I'll put the lasers on it. Down, 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 the little round one, lower, under that one. That one? Nope. nope. Under it. That under one, it. that one. That one's pretty bare. So you got a little If you want to look up a bit, I think I saw down, one. Down, right there, underneath the lasers. That one right there. Just poke it. That one? Yeah. Nope, below that one. Below that one. Oh. This one. That one. Does it move? Mm. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, you can grab it. I can? Yeah. All right. That not too small, is it? That looks a little small. What about just to the right? Yep, this one can. Oh, sorry, I got it wrong. Oh, oh. the porch a little bit. Wedge shaped, about the right size. We're in the right area. I'm liking it. What do you think, Taylor Ann? Yeah, can we get yeah some zooms and uh, nice rotations there, just like that? Hi, this is Hannah from the lounge. Yeah. And that rock looks great. Okay, awesome. Great. Thanks, yeah. Hannah. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right, are you good for a starboard box? Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna come up a bit here while you're doing that. Roger. Just to give you a lot of room to swing around. And for bio boxes, we have starboard box F, C, and D open. F, C, and D. Yes. Is this uh, 107? Or sorry, 106? Uh, yes, 106. So F is the big one in the back. That's probably the easiest one to get to. Roger. Oh, oh, oh. Great sound effects. Bombs are in. Awesome, nice. beautiful, Jake. And then a sample number 106. Nice job, Jake. I called that Jake's birthday rock in my waypoint. Oh, yeah. Thank That's you. a great idea. I'll note that in the samples. <laughs> and the depth is 1657. Or so, 1657. I'll look at it on the big screen for you. It's a little easier to park the thing if you. Thank you. Did he go down? Oh, it's coming down slowly. Yeah, very good. You got hydraulics off, do you? Yeah, the blue button's off. Very good. Okay. 
Did he come down? Uh, don't worry about it for now. We're in a bit of a tight spot here, so we're gonna. Oof! I need to bring down though. And just a reminder for all of us in the van and all of our viewers that that rock collection was a very sacred rock collection, as we are in the realm of Po and Papahanao uh, Makuakea, which is a marine national monument from which all life uh, arose for the Native Hawaiian peoples, specifically um, in Po. Um, I am not Native Hawaiian, so I will not speak on it more than that, but I just wanted to um, clear the, the air for anybody to kind of give um, any explanation on um, the meaning of what that rock collection is. Um, I know that they, they are not representative of ancestors, but are in fact carrying the ancestors' energy, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yes, thanks, in, uh, Taylor, and you're absolutely right. Um, as you said, we're in the land of Po, Pop, and we're in Papua Nau Moku Okea, uh, where we Native Hawaiians believe all life originated and where we come after death. Um, this is the land of our deities. Um, and our amakua, our elders, and we believe that um, every organism, every rock, everything has a spirit. And so in sampling, we're taking that spirit away from its home forever. So we just want to say mahalo to Kanaloa. Thank you for allowing us to take this sample away from its home. Um, and yes, yeah, thank you, Taylor. And I'm sorry for dropping it <laughs> a couple of times. I think it's okay. And we ended up collecting the one that you dropped. So, you, yeah, you didn't fumble it. Yeah. You, you put it in the box. That's a great, great job. Awesome job. And thank you so much for sharing, too, Gina. It's okay. Val's going to take a hammer and a rock saw to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will help us get a, a better idea of the origin of the seamount and its history and, um, yeah, get us a, a larger understanding of exactly how um, these ancestors have created this realm. Right, a history of the Pacific plate itself, a history of the Pacific written in rock. Yeah, very, very old. Um, I wish Val was here to explain how old that sample could potentially be. I know we do we joke, joke around and we are excited to get a good sample to understand this place better, but you're right. Thanks, Taylor Ann and, and Jaina and Jacob. We're all aware of the, the significance, and I think that's why after we do remove something and after the, the, the ROV is clear of the sample area, then it is a moment to, to remember where we are and what we're doing. You rang? Oh, it's Val. <laughs> Is that you in the lounge room? Uh, I'm not in the lounge, I'm uh, down in the wet lab. Oh. Uh, did you want uh, a little bit more on the uh, geologic yeah. context? That would oh, be absolutely. awesome. Thank you so much for chiming in. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, what we're trying to learn about these uh, uh, seamounts is, uh, um, because we're sitting in an intersection of the Hawaiian hotspot track and uh, um, what we think is a much older uh, Cretaceous age uh, hotspot track underneath it, we're trying to figure out uh, what these seamounts are, like uh, what part of the mantle they came from and what uh, volcanic system they're related to uh, and uh, how old they might be. 
So um, if, it, if they're uh, Hawaiian, they'll have a very uh, distinct isotopic signature that we can use to uh, uh, identify uh, rocks from the Hawaiian plume. And uh, uh, it should be a certain age, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 million years. Whereas this older hotspot track that we're uh, trying to identify, um, that could be about 80 to 90 million years in this uh, area. And it'll have a different isotopic signature uh, compared to uh, Hawaii. So we can kind of tell them apart through that combination of age and uh, compositional data. So the 80 to 90 million would be the Cretaceous? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Val. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy the enjoy the watch. <laughs> yeah, so one of the great things about Nautilus is that um, a lot of the spaces, including the control van, are mic'd up, so you can listen to our live stream from them, and you can also chime in from other places on the boat. So um, we just heard Hannah from the lounge and Val from our wet lab. So thank you, geologists, for assisting us uh, in a very geological challenge to watch. <laughs> OK, let's try another uh, 20 to the west, please. Or uh, east, east. Right turn, right turn. Right here. And I think the ages, too, gives us a really good context of when we're talking about um, ancestral lands. It truly is coming from um, centuries and millions of years before we came to this Earth. So everything that we're seeing on screen, including this halo, is this a halosaur? Yes, this would be a halosaur day. To know if it's a halosaur or an aldrovan, the other two either of the two genus in the uh, family, we would need to have a closer look at the video, but otherwise, uh, closer look at the head. Right. Uh, so it's normally the shape of the head that kind of... Uh, it's not the shape. It, so this looks like an Aldrovandia. If it doesn't have scales on its head, then it is the genus Aldrovandia. If it has scales, then it is the genus Halosaur. Oh, okay. uh, and both are in the same family. This oh. looks like it has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cute. Oh. I think Just it has scales because it looks a little darker. Paldovanias kind of have a more translucent uh, head. Thank you so much for this room. And we are about halfway through this watch, so um, a little more than halfway. So just another update for anyone tuning in now. We're currently exploring an unnamed sea mount as part of the Ala Al Moana Kaiuli expedition. We're located roughly 45 nautical miles southeast of Pearl and Hermes Atoll. Um, Atoll, and uh, this sea mount was previously mapped in 2014 by RV Falcor. Um, and now we're getting some high-resolution imagery and physical samples to, be to better understand how this area five. formed, or um, whether it's formed from the Hawaiian hotspot or Cretaceous in origin, um, and also gathering some biological samples. Thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are in the US, Canada, Australia, Nigeria, Italy, Hong Kong, Guam, France, and Germany. Um, and Hungary, so um, we're really Stop glad right. you're exploring with us. Feel free to uh, enter your questions, comments, stories into our chat box, and we'll try to get to them when we can.
Yeah, this is a beautiful bamboo coral web, probably the lepidizers that we are seeing. So, uh, the sea anemones that we saw earlier during our shift, which had the orange tentacles and a brown base, so they uh, seem to be Coming in the family Actinostoloidea. Uh, but that's the level that I can identify them as. Closed is polyps. Oh, they just closed the polyps, I think. Can you uh, zoom in there? Thought we were going to get a good polyp zoom while we're waiting for the boat. Don't worry. All right. That's beautiful. And we can also see the sclerites. So I haven't talked much about the sclerites. Um, Sclerites can be of various shapes, uh, like the spicules and sponges, but they're not same. These are calcium carbonate. So the sclerites form, we can see the sclerites. So these white structures that we see in within the tissue, wow. those are the sclerites. So uh, they form, um, they are embedded in the tissue and they give more support and skeletal base to the tissue material in octocorals. So these can be of various shapes with, uh, they can be dumbbell shaped, three headed, four headed, depending on uh, the group of octocorals that we are looking at. And the presence of sclerites is another synapomorphy of the octocorals. That is, the sclerites are only present in octocorals and not in any other groups of octocorals. And the shape and the position and the arrangement of sclerites, these are all sclerites that we can see through the tissue, the white 20. lines and the white needle-like structures, are oh, wait, the shape and the arrangement are used in the taxonomic description of octocorals. They differ from family to family, genus to genus, species to species. The shape and distribution of sclerites are not that significant in the sea pads. They are more general structured, but in bamboo corals, pa uh, paramorciates, paragorgias, all the other fans that we see, they form a very important role in describing. So understanding the arrangement and shapes is a major part of uh, the taxonomic okay, no study of this group. And they form a, that is why like even though these corals can look flimsy, they're not because they have the internal skeleton and then these skeletal uh, material in embedded in the tissue that provide further support to oh the yeah. Wow. That's, That's pretty looks amazing. Looks that was a cool close-up and a great yeah, explanation. that was so beautiful. Yeah, and we're looking at it live at 1,624 <laughs> meters. <laughs> Absolutely. Without yeah, sampling anything. Exactly. Yeah. That is the beauty of technology. No better classroom than this. Right. I felt like I was looking at a textbook. <laughs> <laughs> and an amazing ROV pilot to get us so close. Yes, Absolutely. awesome Dance skills. Operator. skills. Operator. Yeah. Yeah, Dan's really good at getting close to things and keeping them protected. <laughs> So we had a question earlier, uh, Upashana, if yes. you, um, like, so we have been seeing more of the polyps closed. Um, what are the, like, are there different reasons for them closing? Is it a reactionary or they close them once they get their food? Uh, it's reactionary to the ROV and the light. Okay. So uh, it's kind of like a defense mechanism where they close themselves up. Uh, so it's in response to... Um, the ROV, the presence of the light, the noise from the ROV. So, if you, because they're highly sensitive, they have sensory organs in them. Um, so, as soon as you get near them, they close up. Okay. Yeah. And coral polyps. Up on it, <laughs> coral polyps in general can close up when, like, you know, if there's sand or something yeah, that yeah, washes yeah. onto them yes. or any kind of disturbance. Yeah, and we just passed over a beautiful metallogorgia. Yeah. Okay, now we're good for 20, thanks. Yes, please. It's pretty 
pretty striking pillar or stack or something in the sonar. Yeah, the structure over there. Yeah, we're kind of following the point here. So it falls off to the left and right. All right. And we had another interesting question. At these depths, what provides the oxygen for the living animals? Because, again, there's no sunlight, right? So there's not um, not really photosynthesis going on. And my very basic understanding is that, um, you know, oxygen kind of diffuses into the water at the surface and gets mixed into the deeper layers of the ocean, depending on certain weather conditions and temperature and different factors in the water. Um, but did you want to add to that at all, no, that's absolutely, like, that's perfect. Yeah, so the water itself has a lot of dissolved oxygen in it. It comes from the uh, upper layers uh, of the ocean, the ocean currents, and there are several come factors how oxygen gets mixed with water. So they're able to take yeah, that up, up and uh, it up there for, me. Yeah, so for their purposes, for their uses. Oh, 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 oh. oh we are moving, we are moving. I should have moved earlier. I chickened out. Up dead. Uh, what we were seeing on the sonar there. And now we're waiting. Now we're waiting. It was straight red line, so I didn't know what was above it. But now it's breaking up a bit. Pulled that into the fighter mouse viewer last night. Spent an hour poking around in it. It's pretty entertaining. I think we see a chitin. It looks yeah. orange, mm -hmm. and compared to the the white ones we can yeah. see. Yeah, there's an orange chitin in here. Mm. Oh yeah. Can zoom in there while we're waiting for uh, Atlanta to catch up. What is that on the rock? That's probably a few, right? So this is a mollusk. Is that the thing I called a cockroach our yeah. first dive? Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. I love seeing these guidance. They're kind of cute. They make me think of slugs, but like very armored, armored up. <laughs> I mean, they are. Uh, they basically are models, slugs, yeah. yeah, with armor. <laughs> oh, and here's a, another... Grinoid. Hanging out under the rock. There's also something a bit uh, translucent and squishy. Next to it. Right to the yeah. right of it. Thank you. Okay, can go wide, please. All right, good for another 20, I think. Yes, please. And notice we have some new viewers tuning in from uh, Germany, Switzerland, and Australia. 
Thank you so much for joining us. We are currently moving up this ridge of an unnamed seamount towards a caldera at the summit. And um, if you're unfamiliar with the term, a caldera is basically a large depression formed when a volcano erupts and then collapses. Uh, so we're very interested in seeing what kind of uh, geological formations and life will be up there. Yeah, I think uh, we just passed Maybe over else. a nice little gorgia, uh, and there was a small shrimp in the water column as well swimming by the as we come up the uh, feature here. Yeah, come up a little bit, just put a little light above me there. Roger. I'll come up like five. I'm going to keep coming up slow here. So. Roger that. And this looks like a bamboo coral whip, but with a very thin layer of tissue or, yeah, or most of the tissue already. Well, the thing is long. Very long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he did a good view of it in the Atlanta cam, oh, as well yes. as how steep this yeah, feature yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. It's again, growing almost perpendicular to the vertical rock face that you are currently exploring. So I get longer than Hercules. Yeah. And so very old too, right? Yes. Slow growing at these depths. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that cold water with low metabolism. Um, I'm going to jump off for a ship to shore soon uh, with some folks in Canada. So um, looking forward to talking with some different families and students. And if you're not familiar with our ship to shore program, we um, do little presentations and question and answer sessions for um, any kind of group, really, any age, um, school groups or other community groups. So if you'd like to sign up for one, uh, we're always happy to share what we're doing through our little studio. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and help set up the tech for that. And I think Hans, if you're still down for it, then feel free to join in our uh, call as well. Thanks, Kara. What is that? Thanks, Kara. Oh, it's a fish. A nice fish. So this would be one of the of the deformers. Uh, then probably the Pathigatidae genus. Uh, sorry, Pathigatidae family. Why am I calling it a genus? Or yeah, or uh, it's difficult to. The way the light was on it, I thought it was a squid or another octopod. I think we have to look at the fins. Definitely a cusk eel, but uh, okay, it has a barb at the end. And from the uh, okay, okay. This had smiling face, the pectoral fin, long dorsal fin, and. Nice shot. Did you say sad smiling face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it has is smiling, but it's like kind of a smirk. Like I think it has something on its uh, head. I was going to say, is that a parasite? Yeah, probably yeah. some kind of a parasite. Mm. 
I mean, it was thrown in there with these other technical uh, yeah. descriptions. <laughs> It's just me trying to, uh, <laughs> it can be uh, Ophidide as well, but the curvature of the head doesn't look good. You think good. it could be this one? Yeah, it can be that one. Ophidide spectra, we'll just stick with Ophidide. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's Ophidide is the safer. Yeah, I think the Vati gadgets have uh, a more prominent uh, angle after the head in the shoulder region which I think also the days have a more smooth transition is that another blind lobster yes so that would be the polychiles uh, by the Voltaria sponge mm -hmm. which is colonized by Several crinoids, uh, ophuroids, uh, and probably a few squat uh, lobsters. 20075. As well. watching the DSC. I don't know if you clicked or not. Yeah, I, I think it's focusing on the smear on the lens rather than in, in, in the DFC. Uh, you don't have autofocus on, do you? Because it should. Where is that? It's like a smudge right in the middle of the lens. Mode manual. Uh, autofocus is the one next to the where you shutter button. Uh, up the AF. <coughs> yeah, it says MF. Oh, yeah. It's in I, it looks like it's in manual. Yeah. It's a significant smudge. But that's a very nice body of a god sponge. With lots of a few roids on it. I watched that little brittle star fall. <laughs> oh, I see the sponge now. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Has that been there the whole dive? Or? Yeah. No. I don't think it was at the start, was it? No, I think it happened. Uh, we were looking at something and got a little too close, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought uh, we had it from the start of our watch. I like think it was, like, at the beginning of our yeah, watch. Yeah, I didn't notice. One of the hazards of having a camera on the front porch. To try, but oh. It's a nice sea star up there. Mm hmm I see. Yeah, if we're stationary, I could mess around with that. Well, we have a flight of an enemy. Good for another uh, zero seven five, I think. That's nice place.
Are those sea stars? Or just a white? There's uh -huh. at least, I think, one sea star on this one. Yeah, I was wondering on about that. On that side, I'm not sure about this one. So I'm just double checking something here. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple of sea stars on these. Oh yeah, there's one on the top as well. It's nice yeah. coniaster. It's like a like a little Christmas tree. <laughs> so do they not weigh much, or is Down the sponge five. really strong? Because some of those are like on the very edge, and it doesn't even look like it's pulling it down much. Yeah, the sponges are. I think um, the sponges are quite strong in that sense, and especially given their speculars and their structure and distribution of weight, um, they can uh, uh, they can allow for sea stars to be perched like that without uh, affecting their position. But the sea stars are, all, I mean, yeah, sea stars are not as light as sponges uh, because they are. Uh, there goes another jumper. Yes. But I think it's just the distribution of weight and the surface area that makes the changes. We have two bony asteroids uh, on the area in front and multiple ophiroids and the one at the back we can see at least one sea star. Uh, I'm quite sure that's not quite comfortable being on perched on top of those extensions from the world area sponges. Uh, a crinoid two different kinds of ophiroids at least. Oh, this one also has a crinoid. Right. So we can see three different groups of echinoderms on the f in one frame. So that itself is a big thing. So we are looking at the crinoids, which are the crinoidea. And we are uh, looking at the asteroidea and the ophiroidea. Three classes of uh, echinoderm perched on a sponge. Yeah, there's quite a lot. There's also like a shrimp in there. Mm -hmm. and There's a shrimp inside. There's lots of ophiroids. OK, go ahead. That's a very nice Can close up. up. Thank you so much. I think you should come up. Yeah. <laughs> As the <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to. Can you uh, look down? I don't know yep. if I can pop down for the fireworks here, but I'll get a quick look at it. Just a bit. How, how do we look after that sweep? Oh, we're good. Okay. Good there. Interesting. Like, I haven't noticed these sea stars on Walteria sponges. Have we seen that on previous watches? I don't remember. I don't think yeah, we did. I don't did. recall seeing that. I don't think so. And I've been paying a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you would totally know. <laughs> uh, there was a bamboo coral right uh, below where we are looking at. Can we just have a quick look at it? We don't have to zoom. Sorry, just what do you want to see? Uh, it's, it's below the current uh, frame. It was uh, a bamboo coral. The, uh, the candelabra? The candelabra. Right. Yeah. I forgot the term. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I just wanted to look at the branching pattern, how the rise. I can get a little closer here. Thank you. Mm 
I'll be absent for a little bit. I'll do okay. a ship to shore, but um, should be back before the end of the watch. Thank you so much, Hans. Thanks, Hans. Look down just a bit. Oh, that's good, actually. You can. I'll come to the left a bit. Um, <coughs> we'll bring your head to the right a bit. We'll come out and look at the wall here. Roger. Looking 90. That will get me, I think. Uh, that's good for now, thanks. Maybe 105. And let it sweep once. Roger. See what we got here. Come up just a bit for me so I can see above her. to come up a bit more and tell he's gonna bonk you. Bonk me. Roger. Another uh, small radio gorgia that we are passing over. Well, bring your head a bit more to the right for me. 120, 115. Just square up at the wall there. Yeah. That should be right there. So for listeners who are interested in following along with our ID, we are using the Benthic Deepwater Animal Identification Guide, uh, which is on the NOAA Ocean Exploration website. So um, this is a handy guide that has pictures, and it also tells you um, at what depth the organisms are usually found, what region, uh, and what ocean, and then it will include um, the entire. Okay, me. I think I'm good for 2105, please. Okay. 
So it will include um, up to, oh goodness. So it will include the family, genus, and species. And for many of these, it's um, difficult to identify them to species level. So um, it will have the family more um, Another one of those little pink confidently yeah. confirmed. And then the genus and the species yeah. are normally requiring um, either physical collection or genetic um, identification. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, and for yeah. certain groups, it's just the family or there's probably another one of those blind lobsters on the rock. Um, or the level that we can confidently ID something, it varies from group to group, so mm -hmm. based on that I, the ID is made. But it also to note that it is uh, not the most updated version. There okay. has been several taxonomic revisions since it was made public. So, um, yeah, the taxonomy may not be the latest one for a lot of them. Uh, and this is also another halosaurid fish that we are looking at. It's giving you a nice view of its head so you can see yeah. if there's scales. I think this would be an Aldrovandia. I don't see the scales on its head. Oh. <laughs> the Can be sometimes difficult to look at the scales and understand the presence and absence of scales. Uh, yeah. Is this a Rodanigorgias, the name of the family or the genus? Bridge Rod RV 20. Uh, Rodan Iridogorgia. Rodan Iridogorgia. Uh, this one, I'm not sure. Can we a young? Or a I think it's a rodent. Okay. We haven't seen any radicipes. I love looking at the radicipes. They are the uh, VIP chrysogorgiates. At least we haven't during our watches. Those are nice captures. Nice captures. There's another one of those Halosaurid fishes. This one's probably a Halosaurid, given how dark the portion of the head between the eyes is. is.
So the halosaur is the one with the scales on it, on its head? Yes. It's quite a big fish in comparison to the Iridogorgia and the Rodana Iridogorgia that's there. Is there a sea star on the Rodana Iridogorgia? It's one of those uh, Voltaria sponges. Mia's not here, so we won't ever know. <laughs> That's another one of the Goni asteroids on the coral. Now this one kind of looks like it's um, <laughs> weighing down. Yeah, it's kind of hanging upside <laughs> down for dear life from one of the thin branches. They're quite comical, I have to say, the sea stars. Oh, interesting. They find themselves in the most uncomfortable positions, I feel. And a master of making their lives harder than it has to be. Really interesting um, geological mm -hmm. features too. Kind of yeah. blocky. I'm I'm sure that's not the geological <laughs> term, but <laughs> but that's the Lehman's term. It yeah. looks like blocks and kind of uh, rectangularish yeah. blocks as well. Okay, try again. Mia's back, and can you see we waited for you? There's a sea star hanging from the coral. You can go tight there, I think. Look through the coral. It's behind the shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the other side. We had a nice view of it previously. <laughs> So is the purple belly on the shrimp? Yes, yes. Sorry, it took me a while to realize what you thought. Okay, you can go in, thanks. Another one of the polyopogon sponges. Um, can you bring your head to the left a bit for me? That'd be great. Left just a bit more. Yeah. Uh, can we have a quick zoom on these corals if possible? The ones in the center. Sure. Thank you. Is there a sponge in the background with the weird uh, shape? 
Are these sponges different from the elephant ears we saw okay, yesterday? Okay, you can look back to the these right. These big right. ones on either Just side, uh, no. There. But there's something at the back which I can't understand what that is. What's that? It's a dark purple crinoid there on the yeah. one of the branches. It is another beautiful bamboo coral. The branching pattern is quite different. Um. <clears throat> Let's try 20 meters to the east, please. Do you want a tighter zoom than that? Yes. Do you want a tighter zoom on the coral for ID? Yes, yes, absolutely. Especially if uh, we can have a tighter zoom on one of the branching points. One of the what? The branching points. Roger. Go, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go Sorry, go my tighter. mic was a little farther away. The ophiroid's arm is right at the point that... <laughs> it looks like it branches right after that. Yeah, I think it's internodal branching. If it's uh, internodal branching, then probably a keratoisis. Because the... Probably one of the keratoisis species with the full... The yeah, it's very odd. Branching. That's a good zoom. Thank you so much. Okay, now I can come up. Did you guys ever make those Halloween decorations where you just take a ball and a tissue paper and it looks like a, a ghost hanging down? That's what that crinoid reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> <laughs> Something spooky for. Yeah. You remember those uh, for all of the Harry Potter fans? Dementor? No, I was thinking more like uh, Prisoner of Azkaban in the bus, they had those hanging heads with oh, long... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that thing. Yes, can we have a look at this? This looks like a sponge from a distance, but Very no idea much. what kind. There's another one in the background, too. This is interesting. Yeah. Because these aren't the elephant ear sponges. No. That at the back looks more like uh, the tetrapleura. But this one can uh, be a, sure, a yeah. tetrapleura that's just is distorted in certain way, the shape. But I'm not sure. Yeah, you'll have to come down a bit. Prime, prime real estate. Oh yeah, full of ophiroids. We can see some ophiroids on the rocks surrounding it. Uh, crinoids, hydroids. I think a tetrapleura probably. It's just like um, the gaps in between the. They're not exactly branches, but there's portions. It's just more. Yeah, I think that yeah. there are a little d different variations of yeah. the tetrapleura where that this seems to match up with. Thank you. That's Pleasure. great. Thank you so much. Sponge Valley here. So in the Atalanta view, we can see a lot oh, of the sponges yeah. just uh, continuing. I think again forming what we were calling the amphitheater of elephant ear yeah. sponges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write this down. Reminded me I didn't send me uh, pictures of the other line of sponges we saw on our last dive. Yeah. This is a second 
observation, but not quite as stunning as the other yet. And I'll take the coordinates so we can do uh, what we did yesterday and look at the, the multi-beam. Yeah, that would be great. I think what made the made it more stunning in the other dive was that they were along there. a ledge or a ledge. And for our viewers to, yeah. to get a sense of scale, there's two dr uh, green dots on the screen from our lasers on Hercules, and those are 10 centimeters or about four inches apart. And we did have, uh, Dan, do you have time for a quick question? Sure. Um, we did have a, a, um, a commenter ask, why are the lasers green? Is there a specific reason? Um, the red ones are uh, not as bright, and they, uh, they're more attenuated in the seawater. So they were green. They were red before. Uh, the early lasers were all red. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, the green ones are definitely the red ones were a lot of times hard to see, and now most of the uh, ones on the vehicles are green. Starting to see some cup cores, I think. Yeah, you're right. There's small cup cores on the rocks. Yeah, thanks for that, Dan. Yeah, because I think red gets attenuated early in blue, so it's not the most, it's not the best color in water. There's some skeletons or something over in this corner. What? There's something going on here. A little graveyard right there. Yeah, it can be live corals. We yeah, they're either skeletons or hard corals. Right? Yeah, that's what. Let's see. Interesting. Uh, push in on the boneyard there, real quick. They look, they have like, they have a base, so uh, we need a closer zoom to understand if possible. And there's a small sea anemone. You got any more there, do you? I think there is one uh, on the bottom, uh, Yeah, too. there's one closer, t I think. These are scleractinians, uh, or are they? I think so, they are. Yeah, they look like a hard, right? like a reforming yeah. coral to me. So they would be. It's a shame we can't take a Niskin sample. Yeah, it can be an Enolopsamia, not a Vandropora because it is not zigzaggy. So uh, probably an Enolopsamia, or um, yeah, uh, yeah. I think we can continue moving. Okay, go ahead. Continue moving. Uh, you're gonna have to while I come up a bit there. Hexacoral. Uh, you can just come up, come yeah. up and look down. Hmm. And for yeah. our viewers who are yeah, running, what, wondering what attenuation means, it just means that. Um, certain color wavelengths of colors disappear underwater at different depths <coughs> because of um, the length of their wavelengths. So the first color to disappear is red. Yeah. Uh, fo and then following down along uh, to, I think, blue or violet. And that's why um, when we're swimming underwater, everything looks blue. Mm -hmm. We are lucky to have um, color correction on the Hercules' camera. camera. Um, so we're able to see the true colors without that. that one for real quick. Yeah, and also we are shining like bright white light on yeah. things. So that's why we see that so many organisms are reddish in color because in its natural environment it looks dark and black. Yeah. Nobody can see the bl uh, red color. So attenuation also goes zoom, to zoom um, in a little bit more if possible on the polyps. Sorry, one second. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, it can go away. Okay, we gotta move. 
Yeah, so Who's I was just going to say, yeah. attenuation also is, in general, the reduction of a force through space. So it's the reduction of amplitude and signal. So it also applies to things like microwave frequency and telecommunications. Yeah. So attenuation is basically the reduction of any kind of wave energy, so electromagnetic energy. So light, microwave, everything is uh, the same, right? It's just different wavelengths. Visible light is just the wavelength, range of wavelength, wavelengths that we and can see, our eyes can detect. So yeah. everything is electromagnetic wave. So it's the, the what frequency gets tampered and lost. Also applies to our tether when we touch. There's a, f I think, uh, Hemichorallium or a paragogia too on the top. This would be another tetrapleura. Yeah, da so Dan also said it applies to our tether, so as it moves, yes. uh, as the force from the ship moves through um, Atalanta, yeah. is that correct, Dan? Uh, there's fibers in both the uh, 6 8 and the tether uh, running at uh, 1310 one way and 1550 the other. And yeah, they're sensitive to. Uh, they attenuate a little from this, from yeah. the squeeze. You can zoom There's in there for me. Yeah, yeah because they're glass. But they uh, yeah, attenuate when they sinusoidal when the radius uh, gets tighter. So these would be hemichorallium. Are you looking Not at the two? Wait. Wait, I think check. it's a paracordia, but I could be wrong. Very Oops, bright no, pink. No, no. Beautiful no. color. Hemigora. There are two, right? There's not multiple, or are there multiple? It looks like there's small coming from it looks one. Like the bumpiness mm -hmm. makes it more. It looks more like a paracordia to me, but it can yeah, be I a don't have an actual reason other than it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the little tube thing under there? Yeah, that's interesting. Is that like a worm? Maybe oh yeah, it's moving a little bit. Or I don't know if it's... I don't think there's a... Yeah. Definitely a coralliid. And I'm confused. Uh, maybe a paragorgia. But the bumpiness also makes it... Yeah, a paragorgia, I would say. Because corallium, hemicorallium polyps cannot uh, retract. Mm. That's another feature. Whereas Paragorgia, I think, can retract. That was a conversation that I learned. This is what I learned from the conversation in the chat. So I'm confused. I think a Paragorgia because of the tip you're saying multiple uh, polyps. You're right. It also just looks like it would be more bendy than brittle, but that's not a scientific observation it's just an observation <laughs> unless we could just go and do like this on <laughs> right yeah which we don't want yeah oh so. uh, yeah thank you so much and okay. a sponge okay. in the background there's a small yeah, sponge in the background sponge. yeah yeah it looks like a small fairy sponge and a fly trap anemone yeah that's a very a dramatic fly trap anemone As we go towards the flytrap, I've always been really impressed by the fiber optic cables that we can connect to, to from uh, the two-body system to the shore. And I know there's a, a lot of resources about it on NOAA and I think as well as Nautilus' page, but it's quite a feat of engineering because fiber is just glass. So it's very, very thin, fine glass and we're able to send signals even when things are, you know, moving around up to the surface in near real time. I think we take it for granted now, but it's actually amazing engineering and technology. Can't yeah, wait to get it into my office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful little Dogoja. Yeah, so in Palau, we actually just recently got fiber a fiber optic cable connected to us. So before that, all of our internet was by satellite. So it was quite 
patchy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just within the past decade, we've had high-speed internet, so. That's great. Yeah. That's a huge polypro gun again. You said within the last decade? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not even, uh, I think it was like in 20... 16? 16, 15. Yeah. 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 My hometown area still doesn't have high speed internet. Some nice uh, pillow lava there. Yeah, I was looking at that. It's like lava worms. <laughs> yeah, these might be more pillows. Let's I'm not see. sure. Is Val still on the chat? Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go back to uh, zero four five, please. Twenty meters. Now make it make it forty. Yeah. So we got in uh, fiber high speed internet uh, within the past decade, and I think we've become so reliant zero, on it zero four five. that um, we actually had a seven day internet outage to our whole island, and um, it was like a yeah. pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It'd be hard to get a lot of work done, and, and yeah, that's, yeah. especially now, I feel like today we rely so much on the internet. Mm Is that a Metallogorgia next to the... Yes, it is a Metallogorgia. Uh, I changed my mind. Let's make it 060, please. Yeah, based on new information. It's very difficult to differentiate. <laughs> because that so theory sweet. about the number of polyps... Like here I'm... I think it's the polyps. That's what they told me. And, but that doesn't hold true for uh, hemids because here I'm also seeing that there are three polyps. You will see many which have like multiple in the hemicoralibs. Here also it's like multiple. But look here, I had a picture open where it had like three from each point this one this didn't this doesn't have just two this has three yeah but you see here the main branching mm -hmm. in this paragorgia there's multiple main branches coming off of that main one whereas it i'm not sure if that's the case with the hemicralium i'm not sure so what the the obvious difference is well it's not obvious clearly because they look very similar this one has a bifurcation Raj, I see. Yeah, it seems like the hemicralium have a fork at the beginning. No. But there's the that coralium branches out also. more. What was that? There's the coralium also. Sometimes it's what was this about the polyps that cannot retract? Asako's in the chat. Maybe we can ask her. Yeah, I'll ask her. Polyps cannot be retracted. Alright, I'll come back down the hill. Wait for the ship. Thought that that was a parable. Polyps cannot be retracted. Hmm. 
We missed that guy, didn't we? Is this a sponge? Yeah. Target. Yeah, this looks very different. It has oh, the kind of spiny bit sticking out, but it looks different to the Volteras that we've been seeing. Yeah. I don't uh, think we have seen the sponge yet. I think it's just a bunch of hydroids going on the sponge. Oh. Oh, right, I do see that. Right? And they have the... Yeah, yeah, I think so. But it's alive? It looks alive. It looks alive. Okay. We're on. Go ahead. Just going to jump off the cliff here a little and... There's a crinoid, a yellow one next to the sponge down yeah. there. And there was a sea star just tucked under. You're going, we already went over. <coughs> so that yellow one was a crinoid, right? I think so. And there's yeah. uh, one of those. Uh Come down. What is the name? Come back up in a second here. Advina Magnifica sponges. Cut the corner here. Advina Magnifica? A D V H E N A. Oh, the alien? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was one on the screen? Yeah. Oh, a I small one. The base was neon, the top wasn't that neon. It's another uh, bamboo coral whip. Which has kind of, instead of growing up straight, has made some bends and curves. A very long one. Yeah. Do you have a pencil? Were we s are we supposed to take a rock sample around 1500? Um, I did not get that handoff from Hans uh, before he left. Uh, I did message Val to ask, but I haven't gotten a response yet. Um, but if this looks like a sloped area with some loose angular rocks, I think it wouldn't hurt to make a collection. Um, when I stepped out, I saw Hannah in the lounge, so if she can hear us, maybe she can chime in. Wet lab to Van. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hi, Val. <laughs> Hi, I haven't checked my messages in a while. What's up? Uh, we were wondering if you'd like a rock from uh, around 1,500 meters. Uh, this looks like a bit of a slope with some loose angular rock. We were just seeing if you wanted another sample since we're almost at waypoint eight. Uh, what was the last depth of collection? Um, I believe it was 1,600. Okay, I've been doing approximately every 200 meters, but if uh, this looks like a good opportunity for one, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, the last collection was at 1657 meters. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, that should be okay here. Okay. Yeah, we never know if it's going to be totally different another 50 meters up. Right, exactly. Okay, so we can go ahead and see if we can collect a sample then. All right, Beans. This is a really beautiful. Thanks, That's a large, also, sponge. beautiful stop. 
That is the alien sponge at Vina Magnifica, which was previously considered as a Bolosoma, but then they found that it's a different genus. So it is still in the family Euplectelidae, the yellow one I'm talking about. Uh, I think this is the one. And then on the left, we have a large polyopogon, then there's a small polyopogon, this massive sponge. Don't know what it is, probably a tetrapleura. But it looks like a weird tetrapleura. I have no idea. Can't yeah, make out no the idea. shape. Yeah. Uh, but it is covered by uh, ophiroids and crinoids, and there's a massive dead sponge uh, behind it also. I think it's part of the same color colony, but the portion uh, at the back has died off, but the front part of the sponge is. Oh, that's a beautiful view in the DSC camera. It's great, but it just has the smudge in it. There, Maybe they can Photoshop yeah. it out. Can I think you, uh, it's on. Push in there, please. Yeah, I think we can, yeah. Are the pink things. Uh, Ophiroids. Oh, so they're not part of. No. I was like, it looks almost tie dye, but it's just. No. No. I see it now. It it's is interesting how the neon color is kind of tie dye, though. Um, yeah. 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 Wow. Such a great color. Yeah, it's very bright. If I get into biology, I, I feel like I want to study deep sea colors and sea stars. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew you had such a love for sea stars, I would never think. So you can study the what variation that, of colors in deep sea sea stars. I never yeah, knew you had such a, a deep lot. love for sea stars, I wouldn't have That's thought of it. It's a big that. project. Okay, I can go in, thanks. So, another way we can also get a sense of scale is if you're looking in the Atalanta view down at Hercules. Um, the, the sponge that we're looking at is almost as wide as Hercules, it seems like. And I'm looking at the dimensions on our website and it says Hercules is 1.8 meters wide by 2.5 meters tall and 3.7 meters long. So this sponge is probably about six feet wide. Is this slope um, too steep for a rock collection? No, I am just going to find a place where there's not a jillion sponges. Cool. Roger. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm gradually understanding the differences between Paracordia and Hemicorallium corallium, but I just have to tune my brain to see that. I Yeah, because I'm noting down a few characteristics. We just have to check that if that's true or not. here when the polyps are closed uh, they're forming the bumps because the polyps are closed but they cannot retract into the tissue so that they're just like not pulling in which in a yes so the paragord so for some reason I was mistaking this for already retracted this is not retracted so whereas in paragorgia they are re they it will be retracted if we so see closed polyps it will not see the bumps and in hemicorallium and corallium the polyps mostly rise from one side of the branch which is easier to see if they are closed but more difficult when we have the polyps open because it's 3d right we are this is a still image but mostly on one side at least in parts we'll be able to see that and uh, yeah, you were right. I think Maybe the that polyps, one, like 
I think the other day they were talking the about the polyps bifurcating, but you're right. I think it's Seven, more about the branches wheels. bifurcating at each point. I that imagine they're all that pretty. The polyps. Yeah. the polyps in turn look bifurcating. That was confusing to me because the, I could never just see two polyps. Right, well, to me, to me it all it like but there are more polyps. Uh, I think it's the, the branches. Right. You rightly pointed yeah, that out. But we have to test these. So I'm noting them, them down. Seems like you're making good note. Um, <laughs> like it'll be really helpful once we figure it out. Yeah. These look pretty, uh, yeah, they don't look, I don't know. <laughs> they look, uh, kind of thin. Yeah. Crusty, lava y. Yeah, we spoke with Val and asked if um, she would want a rock sample here. Uh, she said typically she waits, <coughs> waits about 200 meters um, in between, but if this seems like an ideal spot, we could. But now that we're getting a closer look, it looks like these rocks could be. A little on the thinner side. A little yeah. too thin. Yeah. 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 So yeah, maybe, maybe let's keep going. I would, I would suggest we keep going, yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We have a little over 15 minutes left in our wall. No, no, no. Yes, no. One hour, 15 minutes. We have 15, no, 15 minutes. minutes. Sorry, 15 my minutes. time sense was completely off for a bit. There is no time sense. <laughs> Don't add another hour. <laughs> this has been a very arduous dive. Yeah. yeah. Stop using big words. <laughs> it's another one of those bamboos just like, you know, twisting three, and turning itself. Three syllables. It. Three syllables, arduous. <laughs> Thank you, Mia, in front row, for navigating us through this, um, through the current and the rocks. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> Dan was mostly helping on that, giving us the bearings. I was just looking at which way Jacob was pointing. And I was looking at Jacob's <laughs> danger zone. <laughs> so I would like to take credit for her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the birthday guy is leading the way. <laughs> There's no amount to what you can achieve if you don't care who gets the credit. Good for another uh, zero for five. Mm, nice place. Um, so, like Upashana, you said we're kind of nearing the end of this watch. Is there any kind of um, summary? You want to share about uh, your thoughts about this dive? Yeah, sure. So it has been, again, an interesting watch. Uh, towards the start of our watch, we weren't seeing so many of these uh, polyopogon elephant ear sponges, but almost halfway through into our watch, we started seeing them, seeing a higher abundance of the polyopogon sponges. Um, we have, in addition to these, we have seen a few ferrates, uh, and the tetrapleura, and I think two or three of the neon green euplectelids, uh, the Advena magnifica, which we had been calling the polisoma <laughs> because that was the earlier uh, ID for uh, this kind of uh, sponge. Uh, in the corals, uh, towards the start, there was a higher abundance Better. of chrysogorgids. We are still seeing chrysogorgids, uh, but not as frequently as towards the start of the uh, start of our watch. So we have been seeing metallogorgias like the one we there's currently on the screen, uh, chrysogorgias, iridogorgias, uh, rodan iridogorgias as well. Uh, then we have seen a couple of paramorceids, uh, one uh, paragorgia. Uh, we saw a swimming octopod with a floating actino four. Uh, in the same frame, which is very cool to see and to understand uh, the different swimming or moving mechanism the mechanisms that exist in the deep sea. We have seen a couple of fishes, uh, at least 
three or four uh, helosaurids, uh, one kaski, probably the Ophididae, one rock pen. That was a very important observation. Uh, and another sea pen, the Pinatula. Lots of bamboo oh, corals. Big. Oh, they're yeah, collecting. Yeah, that yeah. might be too big. Maybe we can pause. Uh, we'll pause our chat for now so right. our operations team can focus on sampling. Poke that little one to the right of it in there. Yeah, that one looks good. I'll have to turn your jaws uh, 90 to get it. Yeah, there you go. You guys happy with that one when you poked? Are you guys happy with that one? Um, I, I think so. If is it is it angular or yeah, I can't really not tell. too rounded. It'd be hard to say. It's kind of buried. Kick your um, and it bumped this way a little. There what about go. the one next to the cup coral? Mm. Circle it. Which one, Taylor? Uh, the one right adjacent to the cup coral. So the one on to the, the right upper. Upper. It looks like it's, I can't tell if it's buried or not. Yeah, that one. That's definitely wedge shape, but I don't know if it's locked in. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. You didn't might touch be, it up, up. Might be part of the bigger one. Go up on the screen. Up a little more. More, 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 more. Now, poke that one. <coughs> That's a line sheet. Yeah, that one's loose. It's nice and wedge shaped. That's for sure. Hope it's not too thin. Oh, is that a pink worm under there? Mm -hmm. uh, rotate. That That's might so be a piece of crust. Oh, rocky. there's a little sea star. Are we happy, happy with that one? What do you think, Hans? Is that no, I just want, don't want it to be too thin. Is Val still on the line? I'm pretty it sure she's probably still in the wet lab. Looks I'm nice not sure if she can see from there. Or looks not. nice and wedgy to me, I think. I think that looks like a decent sample. It does sample. not look like yeah. she's in the wet lab right now. Oh, it doesn't, you said? Yeah, I'm looking oh, at the okay. cam right now. It doesn't look like she's in there, but okay. somebody might be in the lounge. I think it's good, so unless we hear otherwise. Lounge, yeah. Nav. Looks good to me. Yeah, it looks angular to me as well. Sample salvo. Okay. So we have starboard box C or D open, or both of the forward boxes? Those are the F2 inboard. The two hardest ones to kill. Nice. I think it's good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, no, the uh, inboard aft. Any, either of those two. The one by that spinny thing. back to <coughs> beautiful and sorry I missed which box that one in yeah I also missed it uh, see. awesome thank you and that is sample number 107 thanks Taylor Ann. yeah was that starboard box yeah starboard bio box 
What is that swimming by? There's something swimming by. And uh, if you also need the duck tail yeah, end, it's 15, 18. Down. You always bring it up. Thanks. Close it down, please. We made it exactly onto waypoint eight updated. Waypoint eight? Updated. Eight yep. Oh. We okay. made it. That's, That's cool. pretty much where the rock sample is. Okay. Nicely done. Oh, I see the waypoint eight updated. The ship was shadow of the ship was on it. You see there, yeah. Great job, Jake. You're getting so good at this. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's not That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Some waves. <laughs> That's our, yeah, that was yeah. A, a wake up call for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all clear. We're ready. Yep. Oh, I'm going to close the box. Can you close that box and I'll change the camera? Sorry, lag it on the box. Close it. just would like to thank um, Kanaloa also for that rock sample that we just collected. Yeah, and for any more context for our viewers, we're very careful with our sampling. We're in a very sacred place for Native wow. Hawaiians in Papahanaumokuakea. Um, so for another uh, four five twenty two zero and zero four five. Right there. We have very um, uh, we have different rules that help us and guidelines that help us make sure we're sampling the minimum amount and not taking things that are rare. Uh, so it's something that we do with a lot of um, careful consideration. And um, to close out this dive, I just wanted to, Jake, if you're listening, you have a shout out from your mom. Happy birthday, Jacob. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob's mom. I'm handing it off, <laughs> but yeah. Happy birthday, Jake. Thank you. Happy birthday, Jake. Happy birthday, Jake. Happy birthday, free diver. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Sure it's not the most fun being We're going to embarrass the heck out of him in a few minutes. So we we're going to get 30 people together and sing happy birthday. <laughs> okay. You know, Jaina made the whole, <laughs> like, 70 kids of her, her, the whole school of St. Joe's. Yep. Yeah, Same we did her. a ship to shore with my dad. And right before we ended, I was like, wait, it's Jacob's birthday. And it was my dad and, like, 70 kids. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so much fun. That's <laughs> well, we started a watch change here. So this has been the afternoon watch. The dog, awesome, dog, dog watch awesome is coming in. Wall there. Great rock wall. I was just going to say that. Thank you. Thank you, front row, for our excellent job navigating in tricky currents and heavy seas. Thank you, Hans. Thank Thanks, you, Hans. Hans. Thank you, Afternoon Watch. Thank, thank you, you so much, everybody. It's been a great watch, as usual. And thank you to all our viewers tuning in and coming along with us on this journey. Um, this dive still has several more hours, so I'm looking forward to see what else um, the ocean will reveal to us. And Thanks for sharing all your um, warm wishes and um, stories and um, all the amazing positivity that you bring into uh, the control van. We really appreciate all your messages as well. Uh, so stay tuned as we shift uh, to the next watch and we'll see you on the next, the next uh, watch of this dive.
Yeah. It is, it is, yeah. Yeah. All right, hi everyone. Do I sound okay? Can y'all hear me? Yay. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. 48 Watch is getting settled in. We just saw some white tip sharks, some oceanic white tips. Yeah. Right before we came in, so I'm excited. We, yeah, we uh, took over on this ridge. Like, this is the craziest thing. It's like narrow and tall, and that the, we just passed an area that, I mean, I know it's not, but you could have almost sworn it was like a man-made wall. Um, very cool. Uh, so yeah, they made good progress over the last two watches. So we're now at waypoint eight, which is awesome. It, we, uh, waypoint ten is the very edge of the caldera, so we should be able to get there this uh, this watch, which is. Ooh. Awesome.